how about we build airflow box number two for the lab rather than cardboard we got some wood here so you can see I've got this long piece for the top and the bottom and then a much longer piece for the sides I got a little bit of foam for some of the ceiling I'm going to need on the top and a box of screws and of course I'm going to use copious amounts of glue so let's get started building airflow box number two Now since I got a top and bottom cut, and I'm going with 18 inches by 18 inches. You may choose something different, but this will take care of uh, any normal vacuum I've actually come across, except for, well, except for the wide track. It certainly wouldn't fit that, because it's only 18 inches by 18 inches. Now let's go ahead and make some sides. Now we are doing the sides. to go. Last board. See I got three sides there, top and the bottom. So let's make the final cut. And now I'll be able to test suction. So that'll be wonderful. I have all my wood now. So we've made some more progress here with the airflow box. This is going to be the top. But if you look underneath, you'll see it's got a bottom and it's got another airflow detection hole in there. So I have the frame built and this frame is built three quarter inch thick wood and you can see it's got a hole in the front, hole in the back and this was glued and screwed together. So everything is naturally drawn very tight. See here's the Here's the bottom detection hole. So I have a detection hole or measurement hole for small vacuums and for large full-size American vacuums. And all I need to do is just flip my box over when I want to use it. So this is super strong and super air and watertight. Finished with the bottom half of this. As you can see, I've got yet another layer of glue. I glued it, let it dry, and then glued it again everywhere. I want to make sure I have a good seal. There's the top. So now I just need to put the top on, of course, gluing all the top edges. The final gluing. Lots.
and lots of glue. So the airflow box is now complete. I'm waiting for the glue to dry because I just put the top panel on. But bottom line, it is functional and it's ready to go. I suppose if I wanted to make it look nicer, I could stain it. I've got some stain for it. But as of right now, it is ready to go. And we can start doing airflow and suction tests with it. So you ask why it has two compartments. So here is the big one to handle large full-size American vacuums. And then here is a smaller one by flipping it around so it can deal with smaller European vacuums or just smaller vacuums in general. And they are completely sealed compartments. This rear compartment is sealed off from the front compartment, so there's no cross-contamination. Now it's time for my first suction test, that is nozzle suction test. Never been able to do this before, and let's see what I can get out of this Kirby Avalier. I want to make sure you can see that. It's not going to be very high. Kirby's are not known for high suction. All right, I think they should get out of the glare. All right, here we go. Okay, I saw 30 inches of nozzle suction. With a green Kirby HEPA bag in, a uh, clean one, this is, this is my used one here, it has the F connector style in there. I've gotten out, out of my new airflow box uh, 5787 feet per minute, and that translates to 151. 0 0.03 CFM, so say 151 CFM. So I think we've got a really good idea that this airflow box certainly isn't leaking, and I've gotten some um, higher CFM results with a bag obviously being removed, but this is what I've gotten with the green one installed. Um, the red one is, is similar, uh, but I can tell you that how you actually install the bag uh, the inner bag, the inner HEPA bag, into the outer bag can make a 1 or 2 CFM difference. So there we are with the brush roll spinning and a brand new unused bag in a machine that's been used at least a few times for a few whole house cleanings. And on my new airflow box with the, with the new setup, we're sitting at about 151 CFM.